My name is Mohammed Suleiman, and I greet you with the Muslim words of peace, which in Arabic is Assalamu Alaikum, brothers and sisters, which means peace and greetings be upon you. I'm the chairman of Islamic Action. Islamic Action, African who are holding this talk for black students at Middlesex University, are one of a number of black Muslim organizations in Britain today. Thousands of young black people become involved in Islam, as I have, through hearing about it from groups like this, or the Nation of Islam, power on Nubian Hebrews. As a team, we travel extensively all over the country. We never, we never come across closed minds or closed hearts or closed ears. We're finding that the more we travel, people can't get enough of the message we're coming with, the solutions we're bringing. People can't get enough um, of, or, um, of what we have to offer and what Islam has to offer, what the belief in Allah has to offer, what the belief in the Prophet Muhammad has to offer. Yeah, the belief in Islam has to offer. The belief in our own African self-identity and strength and powers and energies and dynamics have to offer. What we're saying is that we look into ourselves now by saying, well, Islam and Africa ain't separate. It isn't a case where Islam, Islam being forced on Africans. That is a total lie that's been created by your oppressor to let you know you never had a history, you never had a culture. He wants always to reduce you to his concept that you never had fine silk, you never had scientists and astronomers, you never charted the stars, you never had language and culture. Along with he was crawling around in all fours in the caves of Europe. So yeah, Islam is Allahu li Muhammad ar rabbanatu qabul hamd Allahu Akbar Today we find that a lot of our young black men who the majority are unemployed the majority have very little or lack education and many of them are frustrated and angry and they're looking to something that's going to offer them manhood Allahu Akbar So you find today that specifically black men they, they feel that Islam offers them manhood, it offers them respect, it offers them dignity, it offers them nobility, and it offers them the chance for the first time to look into themselves and to get knowledge of self and realize who they are and what potential and what role they play. <laughs> Islam is playing a growing role in Black Britain, bringing a message to all levels of Black British society. It's the people in these estates who um, feel disempowered, who feel that the state isn't offering them anything. And he, he, very, here in this very place is a place where we find that we have a lot of people who are receptive to our message. They're receptive to the message that Islam brings, the, um, the fact that it can empower them. We believe also as well that there should be a unifying factor among them as well as the organisation and we believe that this unifying factor, once, once they're educated, um, once they're organised and once they're unified, then you'll find they'll be able to find ways to liberate themselves and we believe that you can't liberate yourself um, if you haven't got a plan, you haven't got a map and we believe that the map we have today is Islam. 5 verse 6 of the Quran rahim. O oh, you who believe, when you rise up to prayer, wash your faces and your hands as far as the elbows and wipe your heads and your feet to the ankles. Islam offer. The point is, you cannot say you want a revolution if you're addicted to the vices of your oppressor. You cannot say you want a revolution in our communities and of every block you have a shop selling you alcohol every single day to keep you desensitized to the problems that are around you. You cannot say you're going to have freedom if you're addicted to crack or heroin. You cannot say that you are going to have freedom if you're addicted to gambling. If you want to have freedom, then you have to stand up as a man and as a woman with some backbone and say, well, how am I going to um, free myself? And I've got to do it my own methods. I cannot do it with the language of my enemy. I cannot do it with the religion of my enemy. Yes? I cannot do it with the um, thought patterns and the miseducation of my enemy. It's not broken. I, I think the first step is to recognise this and to begin to flow back into the mainstream and to, because you, you cannot solve problems by standing on the sidelines. I mean, that's impossible. We've tried, as I said before, the other methods, we haven't seen them being productive and we need to try something that's going to help us do for ourselves. We need something that, a religion that's going to help us to look to ourselves, not a religion that helps us to look to somebody else. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Surely Allah does not change the condition of a people until they first change their own condition. Islam.